Hey guys, it's Roderick. I'm here with the resurrection of Magneto number two. So, as I kind of said in the issue in the first in the first issue review, of this these resurrection kind of stories all kind of take the same narrative arc, right? So the first, so like the, the first issue is all about where our protagonist is at, where they're located, and kind of what illusions are surrounding them, right? Like we saw the same thing in the resurrection of Jean Grey when Jean is in the Phoenix Egg and she's kind of living this kind of full life based upon old characters we see. We see the same thing with Magneto. He's not living a full life, but he's actually being judged for what he's done, right? So then we see where the characters are. We see the intervening characters come. And then the next issue is going to be the characters trying to extract them. And then we get this whole big moral wrap up. And the person ends up leaving and being resurrected a little bit better, a little bit wiser, a little bit smarter than where they were, right? So we kind of know where they were, what the plot points are going to be with this resurrection. For me, then it's like, okay, if I know how the story tracks, then I want the story to be good. And so far, it's good. I mean, we don't get enough Storm Shine you know, comic books anyway. I mean, X-Men Red was good, but, you know, Storm has really been underutilized in this entire Fall of X arc, if you want to call it that, because she's been on Mars, right? So having her go and extract Magneto and really be kind of the spiritual Sherpa for Magneto to come from the underworld, I thought was a great use. I mean, I have no complaints about it. It's just good. I just... I don't really see why they had to kill him anyway, but I do recognize that they had to take Magneto off the board because then if Magneto was at the Hellfire Gala, then it probably wouldn't have turned out the way it did and so we wouldn't have had five months of all the stuff we had, right? So I see why they had to take certain characters off the board, not have them available. So you know what? We're not going to complain. We're going to go along with the show. So let's get started. So... Magneto is recalling, is he's at the like the little fire river. Remember, he can't see, but blood's coming out of his eyes. And he's at, you know, he's re he, he's recalling that the deal he made to get the island where the Hellfire Gala was made. So if you remember back in, I think it was probably X-Men or probably House of Powers of X, anywho, he had to make he had to go in underwater with Namor and make a bargain with the sea witch, right? So Long story short, he plays his game with the Sea Witch. This Namor, with his slick-ass mouth, ends up offending the Sea Witch. And she's just like, this ain't what we doing today. So you may drown Mr. Sea King right here underwater, which is fitting for you anyway. But Magneto, because he won the challenge and got the key, he ends up saving Namor's life. And she gives him the key. And she says, the key, you'll have the key until the day you die or until you turn it. But be careful because the key is in your pocket is... The, leads to the door of judgment and purification, right? So Magneto puts it in his pocket, but never touches it, right? Because clearly he's having bigger things to do, right? So now he's at the river with all the names of the people who have who he has either killed or they have died in his name. And it's a lot of names, right? Because Magneto, as you recall, back in the good old Magneto days, wasn't really with the bullshit, right? Like, you really didn't have that long to live if you were fucking around with Magneto. So as he's blind... You know, so now Storm arrives and she's like, oh, good grief, you know? So she like brings some snow to start to comfort him. And he's like, go away or else. And I was like, or else what? Like, like, I, you really think you're gonna fight Storm in the afterworld? Like she don't went from life to the afterworld to get you. Like, how do you think this is really gonna end up? But it's a comic book and we need some kind of dramatic arc and some action. So there we go, right? So then Magneto continues to read the names and he recalls like how they, how they died. Either he killed them or, you know, like one guy he killed and he lied to Cyclops about it. And, you know, whatever. Storm's like, dude, like enough with the sulking. We got work to do. We, I came to get you. I felt your pain. Why don't you come and do it, right? And then now, now mind you, Storm is totally appalled by the fact that when she sees all these names and finds out who all these names were, she was like, oh, girl, okay, whatever, right? So anyway, Magneto thinks that his great work is to stay there and remember the names and atone for all the wrongs he's done while he's alive, right? And Storm's like, look, I recognize you're doing that, but there's some life in living you need to come back to because it really needs you, right? So then Magneto goes like, look, you don't understand. Like, you were there when we, when we sentenced Sabretooth, right? Now, Magneto feels in his rec in, in the afterlife that the sentencing of Sabretooth, based upon the Krakoan laws, was really wrong. Now, I always took issue with the Sabretooth sentencing because as trifling and horrible as a person Sabretooth was, Sabretooth did not do anything wrong per se. Let me explain. 
If you recall from House of X and Power of X, Sabretooth, Mystique, and Toad were charged by Magneto and Charles Xavier to break into the facility that is owned by Reed Richards and Tony Stark to get the information of when Nimrod would come online and all their research that is going to lead to the creation of Nimrod, okay? So in the process of them breaking into this facility, they told them, don't kill anybody, just get the information. But Sabretooth can't motherfucking follow instructions and ended up killing people. So then they got this, so then Mystique and Toad escaped through the gates. They caught Sabretooth. Enters Emma Frost showing up to Sabretooth's trial and letting them know that you can't really do anything to Sabretooth. As an, as a citizen of Krakoa, we judge our own. Don't make this get ugly. Let him go. He follows Emma back to Krakoa. And then they, so while Sabretooth is on his way back to Krakoa, they come up with their three laws. Kill no human, make more mutants, respect the land. They didn't have those rules when Sabretooth went for his mission. So all he had was Magneto saying, don't kill anybody. But it's Sabretooth. There are going to be some dead bodies. Now when Sabretooth shows up to the Quiet Council, they're like, guess what? We got these three laws and you broke them. And I'm like, those laws weren't in place when, you, when, he, when he went on his mission. But since they like to make be like, because back in that early days of Quiet Council, they like to make examples of people all the time. Like that was their, like it was stunts and shows in those early Quiet Council days. So you were going to be, so they made an example out of Sabretooth and they put him in the pit. So that's how we actually found the pit existed. Now they may need to remember about the exiles, right? A bunch of these kind of raggedy, taggedy mutants who decided that they just weren't going to listen to no laws and that people weren't going to pay attention and that there is nothing for them to do until they got thrown in the pit. And Magneto's like, well, they weren't really as bad as Sabretooth, and I really should have, you know, uh, I don't think that was bad. Then he remembers how he threw Toad in the pit during the whole trial of Magneto situation when, <laughs> when trifling ass Mystique turned herself into Magneto and killed the Scarlet Witch because she was high-key bitter that Magneto and Charles wouldn't bring Destiny back. Like, if there's one thing to say about Mystique, like, she's just ten toes down for Destiny because once they told her that, that Destiny wasn't coming back, she decided to choose violence at every choice. And that was such a hilarious run of her sitting back realizing. So, anyway, Toad ended up going in the pit for that whole situation, right? And so I'm like, okay, look, I get that, but... Then we really need to talk to Wanda about this. Like, and then he gets all upset again, right? So then he's like, look, she's like, I don't got time for this. We got problems. And you sound like Charles. You be using people for you, what you, what you need them to use them for. Then when things go left and you start to feel bad about how it happens, he goes, what, Charles, what's going on? So then Storm tells him everything that happens. The Hellfire Gala, Orcus, the, all the plans, everything that's been going on. And she's like, I told you to watch him. And she storms like, bitch, I've been busy. Didn't you leave me up in Mars with all these fucking Iraqi people and all their bullshit going on? What the fuck you think I'm doing? She, she's like, look, I told you to watch him. She's like, bitch, I told you I was busy. So then he gets mad and starts to fight Storm. And Storm's like, look, this ain't what I came for. This ain't what you came for. So you need to come to your senses, right? So then he's like, look, I need to be judged. I refuse to accept forgiveness. I did not live a good life. So the best thing I could do is live a really good afterlife, right? And so then she's like, okay, fine. Let me try a different tactic with you. So she gets behind him and she covers his eyes. And she's like, look, we can't control everything. It's very much, again, like the same thing we saw with the Jean Grey story. That you realize that you can't control everything. Everything ain't always in your control. You win some, you lose some. But look, life is worth living. Pretty much what she says, right? Now he can see... And then now, as he can see, all the names of people he has, you know, he's killed have now been transformed to all the people that he saved. And he's like, oh, okay, that's not, that's, that's good, but there's not enough names. So let me go, okay, I'll go back with you now. So I will, because I can add some more names to this list. She's like, fine, shit, fine, fine. However, however you want to get there. So then finally, he takes out the key, he turns it, and then they all fall. So Storm and Magneto you know, fall down to the floor, and we get this ominous voice that's like taunting them, being like, Storm, yeah, I know you, you think you're goddess or whatever, but the ex that loves you don't love you back. I thought that was a hilarious line, by the way. And then Magneto, you're a murderer or whatever like that. And then we get a vision of who it is. And I'm like, is that the Shadow King? So now there is some kind of pass-through alley easement, and now they have to deal with the Shadow King. So again, I thought it was a really good episode. I mean, again, we know the arc, 
And I'm kind of interested in that because, child, we need Magneto back. We need we need some of the heavy hitters, right? Because these last few months are going to be really, really intense. And we need everybody on one accord and in alignment. Mother Jean is going to be coming back soon. We're going to have Magneto back. Storm's going to have her head in the game. Scott's going to have his head in the game. And now we can really start taking on this orcas ish with our fingers crossed that they just don't send us all the way back to the mansion, you know, in July. So anyway, thanks for watching and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching my videos. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And don't forget to check out some of my other videos.